Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with the Dicey Review. And today we're going to learn how to play the two-player game Kodama Duo, being released by Indie Boards and Cards and Action Phase Games. Kodama Duo comes with all of the components that you see here, including nine decree cards for spring, summer, or fall, one season token, and two player tokens, 36 branch cards, 21 Kodama cards, two trunk cards, a splitter marker and a chooser marker, two 50 and 100 point tokens, six spirit tokens, and one score track. To begin setup, place the score track in the middle of the table, then place the season token on the season track next to the word spring. Then give each player a random trunk card. Make sure to place your trunk card so that the bottom of the card is near the edge of the table. Then place both player markers on the zero space of the score track. Each player marker will correspond to a symbol printed on the player's trunk cards. Shuffle the Kodama cards and deal four to each player. Then shuffle each set of decree cards separately and place them next to the play area. Leave one decree card for each season. The other two can be placed back in the box. You can also return the remaining Kodama cards back to the box. They won't be used this game. Next, shuffle all of the branch cards and form a face-down deck. Place this next to the play area. Place the spirit tokens beside the deck. Then give the player wearing the most green the chooser marker, and give the other player the splitter marker. After all of this has been done, you're ready to play the game. Kodama Duo is played over three seasons, and each season is divided into a Decree Phase, a Growing Phase, and a Kodama Phase. Let's look at the first phase, the Decree Phase. At the beginning of each season, players will reveal the Decree card for that season. The splitter will then read it aloud for both players. The revealed card will introduce special rules that players have to follow during this season. When the Summer or Fall Decree card is revealed, players can remove the Decree card for the previous season. Only the current Decree card will take effect this season. We'll go over some examples of these Decree cards and how they affect gameplay after we've explained more of the rules in more detail. After the Decree phase, players will play the Growing phase. During the Growing phase, players will take turns revealing branch cards and splitting them into different piles. One person will split the pile, and their opponent will choose one of the two piles that contains branches they want to add to their tree. Players will repeat this process until both players have added four branch cards to their trees. The first step of the growing phase is the reveal. During the reveal, the splitter will draw three cards from the top of the branch deck and split these three cards into two smaller piles. Each pile has to have at least one branch card. The chooser will then select one of these two piles of cards to keep. In this example, the chooser would take this pile. The splitter would keep the remaining pile as their branch card. After the splitter and chooser have chosen their branch cards, each player will connect one of their new branch cards to their tree. When placing branch cards, players must abide by the following rules. When placing a branch card, where the branch extends off the edge of the card, it has to touch the bark on another card. In other words, it has to look like a growing branch. The width of the bark where the cards connect doesn't have to match. So for instance, this would be a legal placement, and this would also be a legal placement. The newly placed card can only touch one other card. So for instance, if a player tried to place a card this way, that wouldn't be allowed. You're also not able to cover the features of any card. So for instance, if a player wanted to try and place this card here, it wouldn't be allowed because they would be covering a feature. A branch card can't hang over the edge of the table, and players aren't allowed to place a branch that would cause them to score more than 10 points this turn. We'll go over this in more detail during the score points section in a moment. It's also important to note that once a branch card has been scored, it's not allowed to be moved. After placing a branch card on their tree, players will need to look at the features on that card. They will then score one point for each instance of those features in that continuous line of cards. Players don't score any points for other instances of that feature if they're not part of the continuous line containing that feature. And it's also important to note that you only score points based on the features of the branch card that you played this turn. In order to score a feature, that feature also has to be on the card that the branch card you played is touching. 
So for instance, let's say that the player has just placed this branch card on their turn, and their tree looks like this. The player has just placed a card that has a mushroom feature, a flower feature, a cloud feature, and a caterpillar feature. The player would score one, two points for the clouds, because they had a cloud on the card they just placed, and there's a cloud on the next card in a continuous line. The players would also score one, two points for their mushrooms, because this is the same situation. Players would score no points for their caterpillar, however. They do have a caterpillar here and on their trunk, but there's no continuous line of caterpillars to connect the two. It's also important to note that the player would not score a point for these caterpillars or this mushroom, as these cards are not connected to the one that was just placed. After both players have placed their branch card and scored points for placing their branch card, one player will have a leftover branch card because they chose a pile with more than one card. That player must then discard this card face up. The player who only received one card would then claim one spirit token that matches one of the features on the discarded card. So for instance, the player who only had one card this round could now choose either a star, mushroom, or caterpillar feature to take. This player chooses the star feature. When a spirit token is taken by a player, it's immediately placed on one of the features of their tree. The feature that was covered is now considered to be the feature shown on the spirit token. So for instance, this player now has three star features that they could activate by extending more stars off of this branch. It's important to note that you can either claim a spirit token from the general supply or one that is already part of your opponent's tree. So for instance, if they wanted to, this player's opponent could later take this spirit token from this player's tree if a card was discarded that had that feature on it. A spirit token can't be placed on top of another spirit token, and once they're placed, spirit tokens can't be moved. That is, of course, unless it's taken by another player on a later turn. After players have completed all of these steps, they'll move the season token one space. Then the players will exchange the splitter and chooser roles and repeat these steps until each player has added four branch cards to their tree during the season. At the end of each season, each player will choose one of their Kodama cards and score points based on the conditions of the card. So for instance, this player chose a Kodama card that will give them three points for each Firefly or Star that is within two cards of their trunk, but they have to choose the number that's smaller. So in this instance, this player has four Fireflies within two of their trunk and five Stars within two of their trunk. This is, of course, counting the star on the player's trunk card. So choosing the lower number between the two, they would score 12 points, three for each of the four fireflies. The game will end after the third Kodama phase. Each player will have one Kodama card left. This card is discarded and it won't be used in the game. The player with the most points will win. If there's a tie, the player who has the most occurrences of their trunk's feature will win. If there's still a tie, the victory is shared. Now that we've learned the game, I want to highlight some of the decree cards so that you know what to expect during gameplay. For instance, this spring decree card will allow each player to choose one spirit token and place it on their trunk. This feature would show up in addition to their starting feature. The Lost Wood Decree card for Summer would dictate that each player has to place the first card drawn during each split and choose phase face down. This would keep information hidden from both players. This Fall Decree card is similar, except that the face down card is revealed after piles have been chosen. All right, everybody, that was our video. Thanks so much for watching. We hope that it was helpful and we hope that it was informative. If you still have any questions about how to play the game, please comment below or email us directly at thedicereview at gmail.com. If you want to hear more from The Dicey Review, you can check out our Dicey Review podcast. It can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, TunedIn, SoundCloud, pretty much any podcasting app. You can read our written reviews at thediceyreview.com and make sure and connect with us on social media or at our Board Game Geek Guild. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, we'll see you at the table.